Welcome back, metalheads. Hope you have been enjoying the videos. This one, obviously, is going to be a talking video. We're just going to go over everything that has been accomplished on and off camera so far and get a little talk going in about what I am working on next. So as you can see we're at our starter base here and this guy here was a mob spawner that I had made for my experience system and I had originally planned on building three of these buildings so there would have been one there and then one there and then one there they would have all connected to the same point they would all have the same basic design and the idea was to have just you know a ton of experience going I ended up abandoning that idea when you know I, I had always thought that I was gonna go to another base this was just gonna be the starter base and as I was getting to that point as I was realizing all this work I was gonna put into this thing and all the redstone that was gonna go into it and the number of spawners I was gonna have to find and destroy just to make the um, just to make the uh, the spawning cages the soul cages I decided not to complete this I decided to move on I got this is the uh, the low impact green energy house we have enough, just enough uh, solar panels here that our bat boxes do not explode. And, you know, given time, it's enough to fill these up and it's enough to fill up my MFE, which is here solely for charging uh, jetpacks. But once that was fully charged or mostly fully charged this was really whoa those guys were really enough to keep uh, my bat box charged to keep these machines running and if you've been watching the previous videos these need no real explanation so I'm just gonna go over very quickly stuff goes in chests, stuff goes down into the machine and then it comes out in a chest down here we have two macerators and two furnaces over here and then we have a compressor, a metal former and an ex extractor over here this is my little uh, say window into the ocean kind of thing Anybody who's been to the beach and seen the uh, the tide pools, that's what this basically is, and I love it a lot. I'm going to hate hafting to give it up. So back here was my old storage system. Oh, yes. There was this building. So I was off camera when this happened, but I did something extremely stupid I needed to get some blaze rods and it looks like my dinner is boiling over I will be right back and we are back crisis averted so I was doing some work off camera I needed blaze rods I had a uh, blaze soul shard so I just uh, plopped them in here and they started spawning while I was watching and they started shooting fire and I uh, <laughs> I lost just about this entire half of this building before I could put out all the fires 
and kill all the blaze rods. I had wood down here burn so water got down into the redstone I'll show you shortly so I came back and I built this guy here it's mostly stone you know there's some wood there but really it was to get it contained over here so that I could kinda look over here if I wanted to and if they're shooting they're only gonna hit the stone so everything would be fine and everything was fine except that in this version of minecraft blaze we're not dropping blaze rods oh, I should show you this so the the point was not to kill the blaze personally the point was for them to spawn and die and I have a um, I forget exactly what it's called over there it's a high high energy pellet launcher so it shoots this ball of energy that disintegrates anything that it touches immediately so I was trying to use that to kill the blaze and I was getting no blaze rods. I tried using the water to kill them and got no blaze rods. So I ended up modifying it into a little killing area here so the blaze would come down and I'd get to kill them and we'd get blaze rods. Now back here is all the redstone this let's see this wire right here that comes up this direction is for my crusher the way it works is that it hits here and it ticks a sit uh, sends a pulse up this chain that um, turns on the piston and keeps it turned on and then this loop here sends and eventually the signal gets around and it turns it off and it's adjusted so that uh, wither skeletons would be a one to two hit kill and then you see this other line of redstone right here this is specifically for controlling the um, the spawning chamber now I had intended you know this would go off to another one and then this would come off to another one now this uh, this dark wire right here that comes up this direction and goes up there is for that piston and the entire purpose of that piston was to block so you see up here you can see a sign there and you can see the water there so we turn this on actually I guess you can't see it from here but it it pushes out a block that prevents um, any more mobs from getting into the collection chamber here that way you don't have to turn off your spawning chambers to prevent them from coming in anymore and they can keep spawning and keep uh, building up over here we had our diamond chests which are now gone moved and this was my uh, brewing setup that I had made specifically for killing um, wither, wither skeletons I have it set up so that it'll always refeed with water bottles and I keep the hopper with um, everything I need to brew the, uh, the instant health splash potions and by having them in this order it's guaranteed that this one will go next and then when this one finishes this one will go next I just can't have more than one in there at a time without creating a uh, much more complicated system 
So I'm going to touch on this real quick. And then we'll get out of here. This was my branch mine. You can see it's uh, far different now. I had had this idea that I would just like, branch mine and go, go, go. And it'd be kind of neat to have um, something like this down here. Then I discovered the big hole mo mode on my advanced drill and combine that with a night vision helmet and I just went to town. So that is done. This was my little farming area. These are ender lilies. They take about one week uh, just a second, I'm going to sneeze if I don't pinch my nose. They take about one week, and then they grow up into an ender pearl. One game week. And you can only find those from, um, I think it was chess, ancient chess, like in dungeons and such. So... This is my little nether tunnel, and these uh, hangings you're seeing from the ceiling, that's from the Better Grass mod. Uh, Better Grass and something mod. It's in the description. And all the way down here, we have our pumping station for lava. This is going to be the uh, energy of the new wave or age or whatever. So I'm using this, um, what's it called? Ender Thermic Pump. And it's supposed to be the best answer to lag as far as pumps are concerned. And if you can hear a screaming in my backyard or in the background, that's my uh, kids are playing monster. In their bedroom. So all of this cobblestone and stone that's getting placed here is from that pump. And we seem to be going through it a lot faster than I thought we would. All right. Now, over here, we have the portal to our new base. And I'm not sure if I ever talked about this. No, that was a conversation I had with a friend, actually. So I found this area. I'm pretty sure it was on camera when I found it. And I just I absolutely fell in love. In love, especially with this water system down here. There's, there's so much overhang over the water or tunnels in the river and I like the shape up here but what really sold it on me was when I found this hole and I found this little water grotto down here in the hole so that is honestly the main reason why I chose this area it was just like, I was walking around, I was like, this is cool, this is really cool, it'd be nice to build a base down here, and then I saw this, and I was like, oh, gotta have it. So, here we are. I believe it was the last video, we had just set up our, um, our very first quarry operation, 
and it was pumping into chess here and I've organized everything this um, let's see we had two full barrels that's 64 stacks of 64 cobblestone plus all this cobblestone all this dirt um, another barrel of cobblestone then we got all this gravel obsidian some fences some oak wood and then here we have all the good stuff and let's see we'll use this chest for right now now that we're here and we're on camera I'm gonna go ahead and get some of this going let's see so we have some gold some silver some lead bunch of iron bunch of copper I think this is um, ten there's some other ten you know and I have to actually see it but I think this one is the copper and this one is the ten so I got this guy set up I was gonna go all the way across but I got a little tired so I stopped for a while basically you jump or you dump stuff into here and it will filter down and it's supposed to go into both macerators and then they go into the electric furnaces and everything ends up down here see yay not working properly maybe there we go alright but of course we also have access to just directly place things and with this we are going to end up with just a ton of ores put those away so we also got um, a few flint some of this type of quartz some gunpowder 32 or 31 diamonds redstone and ooh. my exploring also found um, that bronze I also found two portal guns all right I wanted to double check so these diamonds that we have here it's diamonds that were found in the earth plus diamonds I was able to create out of all the coal that was found in here and there was quite a bit of coal so we now have 101 diamonds let's see so this is going to be temporary all of this is this is our temporary power station and this is our quarry hole now digging the quarry we cut in a couple areas we got access to the the outside world here we have this big giant hole here that gets us to the river and then over here we have access to the grotto but I think I'm just gonna fill that in and pretend it never happened now this I've been trying to decide exactly what I'm gonna do here I had this thought of like building it up and having this like stepped water area that comes up here to try to make it like a um, 
like you'd bring boats in and you come up and you drop off materials from the dock or something but what I might do instead is shape this a little bit rounder and bring in a little area so you could like say have tugs or ropes and pulleys on a ship and you pull it in here and just the back end of the ship comes in maybe about this far or so just far enough that a crane can come down and pick up the um, the goods and bring them up to this level so this level this entire level is going to be a storage area and a machine area basically the workshop and it's nice nice and big nice and tall it's going to start on this level so we'll have one two three and then a walkway and then one two three so it'll be um, three three barrels walkway three barrels and it'll be I haven't exactly decided how big it's gonna be and I'm sure I'm going to break it up into two areas so maybe if if over here is gonna have like the access to the port and the water and the ships then maybe that area should have all of the um, stones and ores and raw materials that sort of thing and then maybe over in this area we have all the more or maybe over in this area we have the more like refined stuff and then over here we have all the created things like stairs and wood planks and torches and rails and those sorts of things and then over in maybe this area we have the the machine shop now the main point of building it over this big giant hole is because of something unfortunate that I discovered at my first base so with the change from soul shards 1 to soul shards 2 they made it so that the soul cages work pretty much just like a normal spawner except you can have whatever you want in it now there are differences for like neutral mobs versus um, hostile mobs neutral mobs they want bright lights and hostile mobs they want dark light I've also found that neutral mobs they spawn best if the spawner is basically sitting on the ground or maybe one block above the ground whereas the hostile mobs they're perfectly fine to have the spawner in the air and to just fall but the thing that I think is unfortunate is that they only spawn when your character is it within I think it's 26 blocks of them and that sucks if you ask me that really really sucks so what I'm going to do is build all of my spawning pads underneath the workshop maybe even have a way of accessing them through the floor so that no that probably wouldn't work but what we'll do is we'll have this area and then we'll have um, a it's probably a two wide gap all covered in half slabs with um, and that'll be on the roof of the spawner so all the spawning things um, soul cages all the soul cages should be three to five blocks directly under your feet so as you're moving around this uh, work area 
they should be nice and active and I'll probably focus them wherever the machine shop is or wherever the high traffic area is because this is definitely far longer than 26 uh, blocks so yep gonna need that another thing I should probably do is get some uh, stuff in here to speed these up But yeah, that's uh, that's what's going on, and that's where I am so far. And if you haven't seen it yet, check out my uh, Assassin's Creed 4 Let's Play. There's no talking, all gameplay, and it is just a fun game, if you ask me. Take it easy.